Good morning, everybody. My name is Ayoke Fishala. I hope you guys are doing amazing. It's really early here in the morning, and that's why you see me with my scarf on. It's really early, and yes, you're going to get to see the real me, okay? And so it's, yeah, it's basically 6.01, and um, I'm so happy to be here because it's been so, it's been a while, and there's a lot of things that has been going on in the spiritual that needs to be addressed, you know, so yeah, we're going to dive into it there's a lot of like I don't know if you watched the last video which I suggest that you watch the video because there were some prophetic words that were actually said I mentioned that you know if you're watching this video I'm quoting myself here that you are tapping into a different realm and I prophesy that God is going to be placing you in your place of destiny. The things were the things that were supposed to happen in your life that were delayed by the enemy will begin to start to happen in an accelerated way because God was trying to, you know, basically fulfill his will in your life, right? And um, there's no more delay. Was what that word that I said. So there are some things, nuggets that you have to kind of go back and just kind of review, right? But before we even get into anything, guys, like how are you guys doing? Like it's been a while. I've been doing well. I've been busy, but I feel like just this past week, like I've just been learning to kind of just take things slow. And I feel like there are certain goals that I have that basically that I had on myself, like I needed to do this and to do that. In order for me to get here, I need to do all of these things and be consistent and stuff like that. Consistency is good, but when you basically load that over like your yourself, like, you know, that's that that becomes detrimental because the Bible says that our bodies are the temple of the Lord. So you need to, like, I needed to rest, okay? I needed to rest doing like, this past week and I I did obviously work but yeah because I am <laughs> very much I'm a hands-on person but yeah this like this week has just been about rest and just slowing down and um and yeah just becoming more centered I would say so yeah and um I hope you guys are doing amazing again did you guys study your bible did you guys, you know, do anything fun? Um, and yeah, like let's get into this. So the last video we we did Daniel chapter six, and in Daniel chapter six we saw how the basically Daniel was being promoted, and we see how his colleagues were basically jealous, right? And the Bible says that we, you know, um, how witchcraft amounts is through jealousy, and we can see how these people basically went behind Daniel's back to want to orchestrate a plan and execute the plan to basically bring him down right and so they did right and they went to so we, maybe I could just like give you guys a bit of more detail they went to um Darius King Darius and they told him like you know uh why don't you make a decree that and like if anyone prays to any other gods right that within the next during the next 30 days except for him you know that the other person will be thrown into the lion's den right and king darius was like you know ignorantly he said okay fine like why not like do it right because this man were considered to be his counselor so he believed them he, he trusted them and so they did this because they knew that Daniel was very devoted and loyal to his God. And, and Daniel couldn't do without praying to his God at three times a day, okay? If you're not challenged with Daniel's prayer life now, I feel like you should be challenged by it because Daniel is so amazing, you know what I mean? Very loyal, very committed. In And I remember in the last video, we talked about um, God's revelation saying that the world, everything that there is in, like, in this realm is Babylon like we're living in Babylon and we need to be more diligent to him like connected to him and keep that connection you know alive because the enemy is really fighting us fighting to kill our relationship with Christ and the reason why I actually came here because I had planned to do the video on Sunday is because the enemy is accent well the enemy unbelievers people that are this they're asking they're saying 
is God real? And this is a question that is basically like, you know, when there's a trend, like you just automatically just, you see people doing that same trend and you're like, oh, like this is really interesting. And because of our human form, it's so easy for it to rub off on you in a way, even though you might choose not to practice such trend, it might rub off on you in a way. And you maybe think about it, you maybe talk about it, you know, you maybe even start to like, research it or look into it or you know even start to do this the, the thing right and so this spiritual you know uh ob- like, should I say call it updates like you know what I mean like the spiritual updates basically is just people saying you know is God real right and I remember just saying that you know to God that at this point it just feels like it's very pride for people to actually think that their god does not exist like it's it's actually pride like and god i am i'm just saying talking to my father here like if in my head like i'm thinking if people don't actually believe that the bible is not real which is like the foundation of our faith then I, it would be very interesting trying to convince an unbeliever, someone that does not believe in God, that God actually exists. And now the only point here, the only, like, the only solution here is basically that God, I just pray that you will show those people that you are God. And usually when that happens is, it's not, it's not in a very nice way. Like God's mercy is what sustains us. And if you want to see God, like if you're being rebellious and you want to, you want to, you want to know that God exists, God will show you that he does exist. Okay. God will show you that he does, does exist. Like, and I'm just saying like, be care be mindful with the questions that you ask be mindful with the thoughts in your mind like there's some times where god will afflict an individual with a disease like will allow it to happen not god god doesn't afflict you with disease it will just allow it to happen because god, god is the one is holy is the one that will block all these things from happening to your life protect you as like as a child of god you know, deviating would allow certain things to happen to you to draw you back to him. And in the case of an unbeliever who is questioning that is God talking to God, do you exist? And that's the same approach that God possibly could use during that person back. But sometimes when people are afflicted with diseases and, and in that threshing moment or in darkness, they feel like, oh, they should go seek out the help from science and stuff like that. But they don't know that it's a call of God to save their soul so that is how I you know I can just think about saving somebody or just answering that question does God exist because sometimes we don't really have the answers and you know we can pray that God will give us signs and wonder well give us the the, the anointing for signs and wonders so that we can show those people that hey like God does exist and oftentimes there is no like people are very interesting because oftentimes there's no probability that they will still believe that you know hey like this is real and I've just experienced your supernatural right so we can only we can also pray for them right we can also pray for them too so those are the different ways we can actually answer the question does God exist and so if you're a Christian that is contemplating or you're just thoughts that's coming to your mind this is the point where you have to understand that some thoughts are not your thoughts just because you're Thinking certain things does not mean that it's your thoughts. Sometimes these are the questions that are basically in the in the spiritual that you've tapped into that you and because of your representative of, of God, you are held to actually answering that question because you are a servant of God. For example, if I were um if I went to if my father was the president and everyone knew that my father was the president, and I went into um you know and maybe in the land there was like famine and I went into the marketplace the people would hold me accountable they would ask me what is the king doing to bring about the end of this farming right so because of the no your they know my linkage to the king do you understand what I mean so basically what I'm saying here mm-hmm. is we are connected with the father 
right? We are connected to him. He is sovereign in our lives. And I'm sorry, guys. And so you will have to basically, you know, be aware of that and be conscious of the fact that you actually do serve God and, you know, his jurisdiction, his governance, his authority is real, okay? And um, yeah, and the spiritual realm is very real as well. It's realer than the physical. So people will ask questions, right? And you will tap into it, but just know, I feel like it's really important as Christians to know exactly like, is this thought for me or is it not for me? And when have you been called to actually represent God? Okay, so this is one thing that I just wanted to just address, you know, and um, before we actually get into anything, but essentially like I've given, I've kind of given you a brief description of like a summary of Daniel chapter six and you see everything that happened and how God saved Daniel, right? From the den of the lions and how his enemies were basically, the, the evil hour was sent back to, to them because it backfired, everything they did backfired. So, and I pray that as your enemies are trying to bring about your downfall, every evil arrow fired against you shall surely backfire on the head of the enemy in the name of the Lord Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. All right, so we're going to get into Daniel chapter 7. Before we do, we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, O oh God, for your mercy. I thank you, Lord, for your grace and your love. I thank you, O oh God, for you continue to teach us, O oh God, of your kingdom, of the secrets in your in the heavenlies. I thank you, Lord, for your grace upon our lives. Thank you, Lord, for your gift of, of, of salvation. Thank you, Lord, for your the gift of faith. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and for your love. Thank you, Lord, for bringing us here today again. Father, it's not by our strength. It's not about our might, oh God, but it's by your, your, your mercy. It's by your grace, oh God. You have poured into us so much that we, we have chosen because you've always, you're always going to give us free will. We have chosen to remain by you every single day. Father, our allegiance is with you, oh God. And we understand that the spiritual is, is realer than the physical. And so, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, oh God. Thank you for fellowshipping with us in the spiritual. And now we're here, even in the, in the physical, too. So seek you, oh God, to seek your word, to strengthen ourselves against the wiles of the enemy in Jesus' name. But I exalt your name, oh God. I thank you for everything that you're going to be doing in the lives of this ones, oh God, as they sit and listen to you. I pray, Lord, that you will increase their faith. You will drive them to do so the supernatural in their lives and the lives of their families, family members, in the lives of their, their colleagues at work and lives of people around them in Jesus name. Their presence will bring about blessings, breakthroughs, supernatural things happening <coughs> in Jesus name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. But as I preach today, oh God, I thank you for your preaching through me in the name of Jesus. I made it myself unto you, to you, for you to use me, oh God, today in Jesus name. But I block every distraction, oh God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. So we're going to get into Daniel chapter 7. So in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, <laughs> Daniel had a dream. And visions passed through his mind as he was lying in bed. <laughs> right? So he wrote down the substance of his dream. Daniel said, in my vision. And that was the first year of the, the king that just died. Okay? Belshazzar, the king of Babylon. Right? That's Nebuchadnezzar's son. Daniel had a dream. He was lying down in bed. He had a vision, right, that passed through his mind. Daniel said, in my vision at night, I looked, and there before me were the four winds of heaven shining up the great sea. This is a vision of, so now we're opting into revelations. Um, In the next video, I will be, we'll be touching on this Um. Right now, we're going to analyze this right now. But in the next video, I'll be doing sort of like a 
comparison, well, not comparison, I shouldn't call it a comparison. I'll be doing a contrast between this, Daniel chapter seven and revelations, right? That's what we're going to be doing because that's the mission for why we're studying Daniel. So that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to do that before we actually up into chapter eight. So that's what, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. So this vision that he had was something that John actually had as well. He had the same vision too, right? In, in Revelations. It says there were four winds, four winds of heaven, right? Shining up the great sea. Four great beasts, each different from the other, came up out of the sea. So that you can imagine that this four winds of heaven was it's like the sea, the great sea was turbulent. Then out of the turbulence of the sea came out this four different great, great beasts, right? It came out, came up out of the sea. So that means like there are creatures that are different, interesting looking under the sea that nobody's actually encountered before it says the first was like a lion this is something that we've never seen before it's like a lion that had the wings of an eagle i watched it i watched until its wings were torn off and it was lifted from the ground so it stood on two feet like a human being and the mind of a human was given to it. So the wings were turned off. And it stood like a human being. And this was a lion. A lion. Verse 5 says, And there before me was a second beast, which looked like a bear. It was raised up on one of its sides. And it had three ribs in its mouth between the teeth I was told get up and eat your feet your feel of flesh it had three ribs in its mouth because between its teeth right it's a very interesting looking animal and it was it I was it was told get up and eat your feel of flesh after that I looked and there before me was another beast one that looked like a leopard and on its back it had four wings like those of a bird four wings a leopard this beast had four heads and it was given authority to rule after that in my vision at night i looked and there before me was a fourth beast terrifying and frightening and was so powerful it had a large iron teeth it's crushed and devoured its victims and trampled underfoot whatever was left it was different from all the former beasts and it had 10 wings now while i was thinking about the the horns there before me was another one a little one that came up among them and three of the first horn were uprooted from it. This horn had eyes like the eyes of a human being and, <clears throat> and a mouth that spoke boastfully. As I looked, thrones were set in place and the ancient of days took his seat. His clothing was like a white, was as white as a, a snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. The, his throne was flaming with fire. And its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out from before him. Thousands upon thousands attended to him. 10,000 times, 10,000 times stood, 10,000 times, 10,000, sorry, stood before him. The court was seated. The book where the books were opened. Then I continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was speaking. So it was like as if this beast had come out, they had come out of the sea. And then 
all of a sudden they appear into the court of the father and describe the throne of the Lord. He described the things that he saw before the throne of the Lord, described the 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 ancient of days as you know his clothing was as white as snow and this is jesus is describing his turn it says the hair of his head was like wool this is something that you will see in revelations we're going to tap into that as well and it says um there were many people be, you know in front of him that were attending to him and the courts were seated and the books were opened right and then i continued to watch because of the boastful words the horn was saying to this horn on the fourth beast was actually speaking i kept looking until the beast was slain right and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire the other beast had been stripped of its authority but were allowed to live for a period of time right the other beasts right so the fourth beast was the one that was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into the blazing fire the other ones were stripped of their authority, but they were still allowed to leave in for a period of time. In my vision at night, I looked there before me was one like a son of man, right? This Jesus coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He said this person seemed like the son of man. So it seems it appears that the ancient of days was he described to be God. And he says he saw this before him, the son of man, which is Jesus Christ, which is the son of man coming with the clouds of heaven. And was led, it was led, Jesus was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All nations and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. All right, so verse 15. And it says, I, Daniel, was troubled in spirit and the visions that passed through my mind disturbed me. I approached one of those standing there and asked him the meaning of all of this. And so... He told me and gave me the interpretation of these things. The four great beasts are four kings that will rise from the earth. But the only people of the most high will receive the kingdom and will possess it, possess it forever. Yes, forever and ever. Then I wanted to know the meaning of the fourth beast, which was different from all the other and was terrifying with the eye with, with its iron tears and bronze claws, the beast that crushed and devoured its victims and trampled on the foot, whatever was left. I also wanted to know about the 10 horns on its head and on its head and about, and about the other horn that came up, right, before which three of them fell. The horn that looked more imposing than the other and at that eyes, and a mouth a spoke boastfully as i watched as i watched the horn this horn right this horn was waging war against the holy people and defeating them until the ancient of days came and pronounced judgment in favor of the holy people of the most high and the time came when they possessed the kingdom so this horn was waging war. I want you to take this note of this 21. This horn was waging war against the holy people and it was defeating them. So let's continue. And it gave me this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on the earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms that will devour the whole earth trampling it down and crushing it the 10 horns are 10 kings that will come up from this kingdom right so this fourth king is the fourth kingdom that will appear on the earth it will be different from all the other kingdoms that will actually devour it says from all the other kingdoms that will devour the, the whole earth right there are other kingdoms that will devour the whole earth that will trample it down and crush it so this fourth kingdom will be different, right? This the ten horns 
are 10 kings that will come from this kingdom, right? After them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones. He will subdue three kings. He will speak against the most high and oppress his holy people and try to change the set times and the laws, right? These people are the ones that are going to try to change things, you know, the new world order. They try to change the laws of, of, of the world, right the only people will be delivered into his hands for a time times and a, and a half times and half a time sorry but the court will sit and his power will be taken away and completely destroyed forever then the sovereignty power and greatness of all the kingdoms under heaven will be handed over to the holy people of the most high his kingdom will be an everlasting kingdom and all rulers will worship and obey him this is the end of the matter. I, Daniel, was deeply troubled by my thoughts and my face turned pale. But I kept the matter to myself. Um, so let's go back to this part where he said something about um the son of man. It says the son of man, and there before me was like a son of one, like a son of man coming with the clouds, coming with the clouds of heaven. Like it was coming, ascending. It was coming with the clouds of heaven. And it had appeared here. It says, describes the throne of the father. So all of this was happening in the heavenlies. It was not, you know, under the heaven. It was in the heavenlies where this was happening, right? So it described that there would be four beasts, right? And Daniel was asking questions, what's the interpretation of this dream that he had? And so there'll be four kings that will arise from the earth and the only people will receive the kingdom and will possess it forever, but they would have to suffer tribulations, trials and tribulations. And what I'm trying to understand here is this is something that will happen. This is something that will happen. This is, this is and, and this time around, we need to understand that Jesus Christ had not come because Daniel was, was he existed before Jesus Christ had made his appearance. And so it's talking about like, this is what's going to happen. And they would receive, they will possess it forever and ever, the children of, of God, but they will have to suffer. They will have to suffer. And it says, and it was asking, like, if we we'll go back to the description of the fourth beast, it was very interesting, right? This fourth beast, right, was terrifying and frightening and very, very powerful. It had large Iron teeth crushed and devoured its victims, trampled underfoot whatever was left, and was different from all the other former beasts. It had ten horns, and these horns were the ones that were speaking. These horns were speaking. These horns, the Bible said, it represented the ten kings. So, although there were three, there were four beasts. The three beasts were described to be. Let's see here. I would, I would like to think that the three other beasts were also the other kingdoms. Were from, it would be different from the other kingdoms that would devour the whole earth, trampling, down, trampling it down and crushing it. So the other three kingdoms were beasts, were, were actually other three kingdoms, right? But the fourth beast was the one that was most powerful. His horns represented like the kings, like different kings that would come and rule. This was, these were actually wicked kings. And so when the Bible was describing this beast. They were actually kings. They were some type of governance, some type of like political regime. Like these were strong kings like Nebuchadnezzar. They were there in like put in that position to actually oppress the people of, of the Lord. Like the Bible talked about here in verse 25, it says, he will speak against the most high, this king, right? He will speak against the most high, he will oppress his holy people, try to change the set times, right? Try to change the set times and the laws. And you see this, in a sense, will 
happen in like when God is saying, well, this is the time where, you know, you have to, you know, just maybe do it. This is the set time for, for, you know, consecration, for example. Well, this is when the king decides that, well, they should be, you know, smoking weed and, and doing all sorts of, you know, treacherous things out there. And then it should be many, you know, maybe casinos, like very close to like, you know, residential areas and stuff like that. So this is something that, you know, is just, that has been pitched to actually change the set times and the laws, right? This is, this is um prophecy being made into um manifestation. I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, so, um, yes, so we talked about the three bits, basically, well, let's just go back to seeing, like, this three bits and how they were described, they were described as, were described, looked as funny looking, right, but all of this, um, you know, characteristics that were given to them were actually purposeful, but there were no specific insights to, like, get an understanding on, like, what kingdom it is but we need to understand that you know this is like you can make that connection by really doing that study to decipher what god is saying here and you know if god has not given you that secret like you possibly might not even understand it right it says the first was like a lion and it had wings like of an eagle right i watched until the wings were torn off and it was it, and it was lifted from the ground so that it stood on two feet like a human being and the mind was a mind the mind and the mind of a human was given to it like it's like i see if this first space was actually going through a threshing moment like it was going through a threshing moment to become you know like this beast like it had to go through all of this like it was cheap turn off. Like you have to go through like a, like pain to actually like become this this beast, right? And you see, like it was given the mind of a human, right? This is a beast. Like when you're talking about a nation, a beast, like a king, like this is like a, a king that has that is literally a beast. Like this man is ruthless. This person is like it's, it's talking about a governance that is ruthless they are lawless they are beasts like like you know beasts and the scripture that came to my mind was um the scripture of when this woman came to jesus to heal a possessed child and jesus was like well you he, do, he cannot basically give um what belongs to you know the jews to um dogs or something like that if you remember and then she was like even um the like they the dogs eat what is like comes off of the of the table of the the, the master was what something of what she said and it just kind of describes like this people like there are they are beasts you know what i mean and so um that's the first one the second one was described to be like a beer right it's another beast raised up on one of its sides it had three ribs in its mouth right between its teeth right and it said and this was it said it was told this piece was told get up and it's your feel of flesh it was spoken to like an animal right this beast was you know basically usually like they only care about something like they only care about what they're going to eat devour it right they're not thinking like this ones are not thinking at least the first one it says was given the mind of a human being like that one is still able to actually like think and kind of rationalize and stuff like that but the, the next one was this one does not even it just this one is just about fighting war devouring right conquering this this kingdom the king the kingdom this this king does not really have the capacity the capacity the capacity to actually make any rational decisions you know and um the other king basically is one of a, that looks like a leopard on its back it has four wings like those of a bird this it has four heads right a leopard with four wings and four heads 
And then someone was giving authority to rule. So the first one basically has the mind of the human, right? The next one basically was, you can call this one a warlord. This one is just about, you know, conquering, eating flesh and just, you know, someone that does know, you know, when someone, when they say someone is not intelligent, like it's usually attributed to someone that is, you know, maybe is, this might be a little really bit stereotypical but it's like someone that is like very huge big right and doesn't really you know academics are usually sit, you know very um sedentary and they just sit and study and just like you know basically do that like most of the many hours in the day and so people that are usually like a bit less like you know um be less sciencey should we talk about, should we say that they're usually like big and like you, those ones are on um, protein powders and the athletes usually you know say that okay well they're not you know like very um intelligent as compared to the whiz in the classroom which is true because of the amount of time that has been dedicated towards study time but in a sense like you can just you can see that in this this description of the second beast is like this person this beast this king is actually just is a warlord is into like battle fighting battles the, the the first one is actually he thinks the first one actually thinks the other one is like fighting fight fight and the 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 sixth one is was given authority to rule right was it yes was given authority to rule and then the seventh king and these people, these kings, you can obviously tell that they are, they have to work together almost to actually like, because they were given different um, characteristics that would complement each other. So they were probably alliances, um, these kings. And the fourth king was the one that was actually different. This king was actually terrifying and frightening. And he was actually very powerful. He actually, he has a, a a large iron teeth which one had a large iron teeth um i believe it was the yeah none of them had large iron teeth the second beast had a three ribs in his mouth between his teeth okay but the fourth king had iron teeth and it crushed and devoured its victims and trampled trampled on the foot whatever was left it was different from the, all the former beasts and it had 10 horns. So this, this fourth beast came with 10 horns and we did the 10 horns were described to be 10 kings. So this is where already kings, like he already, he came with al like alliances, should we say, like it came with alliances on its own. It is strong. Those 10 horns, 10 kings are basically subject to this king right they're subject to him devoted to him um you will see you know how the um babylon will be crushed right the the great whore the great whore will be crushed by this 10 um horns um because of their um uh because of their loyalty and commitment to this king this fourth beast you see that in revelations and you see verse eight to saying something about um you know just as he was thinking about the horns there before me was another one the little one which came up among them so there was another one that came and three of the first horns were operated before it so 10 horns there before me was another one a little one, there was a little one that came, right? A little one came. A little one came, which came up among them. And the three of the first one were uprooted from it. The one had eyes, like the eyes of a human being, and a mouth that spoke boastfully. So three ones, three kings were uprooted from the ten. There was a little one that actually came up, a little one which came up among them. So that they're actually all together, they're 10, right? They're 10. They're just, this is just like a description of like the four kings that kind of like stood out and had a role to play in Daniel's like vision here. So, and he looked and he saw, you know, this 
the throne that was set the ancient days you know the basically the throne of the father right and and described the father and you know he saw he saw the father well he saw him in the vision right and he saw that there were many thousands and thousands of people like in front of him attending to him and there was a book that was open so this was like as if it was the end of days right the, the book was opened and this kings this kings were not given a mandate to go and make sure that the earth is like super clean and everyone is fine it was it was the end of days it was a day this was days of like destruction and great peril right and so um it says he continued to watch because of the boastful words of the one who was speaking, right? Well, which one was speaking? I think it's the little one. It was the little, maybe it's the little one. This one at the eyes, it said three of the first one were operated for, before it. This one had eyes like the eyes of a human being and a mouth that spoke boastfully. Right? That's the little one. I think I... There was before me, uh, there was before me was another one. That's the little one speaking. It's always the little one speaking boastfully, right? Like it's the little one that was speaking here. It said, I kept looking until the, the beast was slain. I was speaking boastfully and that beast was slain. That's the little one was slain and its body destroyed and thrown into a blazing fire. The other beasts had been stripped of their authority, but were allowed to live for a period of time. In my vision at night, I looked there before me was one like a um, son of man coming with the cloud of heaven. He approached the ancient of days and was led into his presence. He was given authority. So the the fourth beast, right, eventually like the, the one that was making, that was actually like being boastful, was like was killed, right? And his body was thrown into the blazing fire and the rest was actually stripped of the, their authority and eventually they were killed after a period of time. But we talked about after those beasts had been killed, the beasts had been killed, now Jesus Christ comes into the picture and goes into the presence of the Father to actually gain um, and he was given authority, glory, sovereign, power, all nation and peoples of every language worshipped him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. His dominion will not pass away. Like the like the dominion, when the, the beasts, right? The, when the beasts had dominion, their dominion passed away, right? They were, given, they, were, they were given a period of time to afflict the people just for a period of time. And I believe it was 10 years. Anyways, we see that in Revelations. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that will not pass away. And his kingdom will is one that will not be destroyed. And that is the, the sovereignty and the dominion of Jesus Christ. And so I wanted to kind of go, it says, okay, so let's just go to get the profile of the 10 kings, right? Um, The interpretation does not go really in depth as to like the last part, the last section of Daniel, especially like this part where, it talks about um let's see here yeah i actually like this part where it says like um like for example like the one that was boastful but we can see here that it's it's basically um the on the little on that was speaking here but it would have been nicer yeah it's verse eight it would have been nicer to kind of get like a bit more clarity in the interpretation part but yeah um so you see here he says um the ten horns are the ten kings so you see he kept um giving more um clarity on basically the fourth beast right um so this ten kings will come from this kingdom right after them another king will arise um different from the earlier ones it will subdue let's just take this thing a step back because like and then you ask and the question is like what happens to the because i feel like the question that i asked before was like um it's a good question because it's like which one which was boast which king was boastful and i feel like this kind of gives context to that verse 23 to 20 
5. It says, it gave him this explanation. The fourth beast is a fourth kingdom that will appear on earth. It will be different from all the other kingdoms from the first two, three ones, kings. And we will devour the whole earth, right? This fourth king, fourth beast, fourth king will devour the entire, like it will devour the three beasts. I'm sorry, guys. It will devour the three beasts, right? And so, and it will trample it down and crush it, the whole earth. And in Daniel's vision, if you, I'm sorry, Nebuchadnezzar's vision, it talks about this, like, um, you know, mountain that basically rules the entire world, right? This is what he's talking about. Um, and he's saying, the ten horn, the ten horns are ten kings that will come from this kingdom. After them, another king. Right after them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones, and will subdue, subdue three kings. It's really interesting, right? It's like here. Well, let's just keep going. The ten horns, yes, they will basically be defeated. Right, and it will. Another, like it says, after them, another king will arise, different from the earlier ones, and will subdue the three kings. Okay, right? <laughs> yeah, it will subdue the three kings. It will speak against the Most High and oppress the holy people and try to change the set times and the laws. Right, so. That's pretty self-explanatory there. And the only people will be delivered into his hands for a time, times and half a time, right? So we're going to get more clarity as to what this means. So if you basically watching this and you're like, um, I don't really get that part, uh, you're going to get more clarity on that. I would like to analyze the part more of Revelation that speaks about that. And um, yeah, we're going to get more clarity on that. So yeah, I think we're, we've come to the end of this um, chapter seven. Chapter seven just talks about, you know, the dream of Daniel. And it's really interesting what he had, you know, experienced in this vision well it's, it's experience and how that basically is connected to the vision of john in revelation so yeah um i hope you guys um learned something from today's bible study so um, we're going to do the closing prayer heavenly father i thank you god for your grace for bringing us here today i thank you lord for your word that was impressed in the, in our in our hearts oh god I pray, Lord, that you will continue to give us more understanding. Even after we'll, we'll finish watching this video, you'll continue to speak to us about the revelations that we'll, we've just listened to. You continue to give us more clarity in Jesus' name. But I give you all the honor and adoration, and I be thou exalted, O Lord, in Jesus' name. And I pray, O God, in Jesus' name, as this ones continue into this week, that they will experience favor like never before. They are I pray that they will, be, they will continue to be protected, I pray, Lord, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper in Jesus' name. But I give you all the glory, O Lord, in the name of Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, for what you did in today's Bible study. I exalt your name, O Father, for in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. So thank you guys so much for listening to me today. Um, today was not like, oh, full of energy like the other videos. But hey, I will be seeing you guys again on Sunday. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your week. And um, thank you so much for stopping by. Bye, guys. Oh, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, guys. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.